every five years a set of bogies must be changed. We uh, have a spare bogey that we rotate with the other four that are in use on the cars. And the bogey that we have out, we take the wheels off, we check all the tolerances, we strip the brake right down the grip and brake. We replace parts that need replacing, springs, adjusting bolts, that sort of thing. Give everything a clean and a paint and get it ready for the next year, depending on which part of the car it's going to go on. If it's on the top, it needs to have the rope guide fitted. If it's going to be on the bottom, it needs the rope guide off. And depending on what side the uh, flange wheels need to be on, we swap things around to suit. There's not a lot that needs replacing on the bogies every time we take them apart. Uh, the tyres I check, the tolerance every three months and see what's getting close. But usually it's every fourth bogey change the set of tyres needs replacing. We have an inspection pit that we park the uh, cable cars over, jack them up and we jack them off the bogey that we're going to change winch it up or down depending on whether it's a top or bottom bogey and swap uh, the cradle over which bolts it to the car itself for the brakes. Everything that's connecting the bogey to the cable car needs to be undone. There's shocks, there's a great big pin in the centre which the bogey pivots around. That needs to be pulled out. Uh, there's a few wires connected and a couple of hydraulic hoses. There's not a lot. Yeah, every year the uh, we have a track inspector in, make sure that the track's level, or well, as level as it can be on one and five slope. But from <laughs> side to side, uh, check for voiding under the sleepers, and we have track maintenance guys in to uh, do all the maintenance. There's lots of different crews that do track maintenance, not just the big on-track one, and we get one of those crews in. And usually the gear that uh, we use is all just, you can be carried in a wheelbarrow sort of thing. Even though it's on a 1 and 5 slope, there's not much problem with ballast continually going down the hill as you might expect. Either side of the bridges and roller boxes, you get a bit going either up or down, which is amazing. So that's a bit of tamping, just redistributing the ballast to actually get it in the right place. And the rail it hasn't moved at all. It's tied fairly securely at the midway point and at the top. And at the bottom it's bolted to concrete as well. We had a bit of twisting uh, because the track wasn't being as maintained as often as we do it now. The track was all over the show. Uh, on the bogies we had the swing arms were twisting because of the uh, track maintenance wasn't being done. This is going back a fair bit and they started to show some cracks. So new swing arms were built and installed and we haven't had any problem since we installed those and did more track maintenance. The track maintenance that we do now wasn't being done. They had to have more swing arms designed and built, the sturdier ones, because they did have quite a lot of twist. It cost money in the long run. 
I think the plans were 15 grand's worth, just the plans. And cut. <laughs> Notice on the bogey that there is a double flanged wheel on one side and flat on the other. That is because the cable car follows the same side of the track when it gets to the loop. There's no points at the loop. The double flanged wheel just follows the outside track. One cable car has double flange on the north side, the other cable car has double flange on the south side. do the top bogey you got to winch the car up quite a way to pull the bogey out from underneath it and when we get to the top of the tracks you've got to take away the rope buffer open the gates there's glass doors to remove and we put down boards pull the bogey onto onto an actual trolley that we winch up toward the truck and then lift it off that it takes a lot longer than the bottom end which is we lower it down and lift it off with a crane, but we can't get a crane to the top because there's a roof in the way and we need a big crane for that sort of stretch. We usually have the whole thing out ready to be lifted off the track in a couple of hours and then you swap bits over and that takes about half an hour and then you pull it back under and at the end of the day you've had a bogey change. We can do it quicker if uh, there's more people but the risk of screwing things up is just quite high.
what we've done is the lower car, we've got the grippers set so the car's clamped to the track. We're going to jack this car up so we've got a slack rope condition, then we can take the rope off. It's part of our licensing every 18 years, according to Swiss Ordinance, for all the ropes the rope or the cable car needs to be changed irrespective of its condition. We do test it every three to four months by passing it through two big magnets and the electrical current put off by the rope passing through the magnets is measured and any breaking any of the strands is shown up as a small blip and we can keep an eye on that the size of the blip and on the paper readout and how often they happen on the paper readout, keep an eye on it. The rope we've just changed had five strand breaks in its entire length and it was still perfectly serviceable but regulations require that we change it. So we got um, contractors in, organised to actually, with the big gear, to uh, do the rope change. They do all the cable changes for transmission wires and stuff so they're perfectly capable and this job was quite easy for them. They enjoyed it I think they would have done it for a lot less than they charged us. For the rope change down in the winding room, we had to create a condition where the brakes are released so we can turn everything by hand basically. There's two sets of brakes in the winding room. There's a safety brake which clamps onto the big wheel and there's a service brake which clamps onto the drums that are attached to the motor. Both have to be released so we can pull the big driving wheels round to feed the new rope on. We can't turn the motor with the rope because there's just too much weight there through the gearbox. So we had to disconnect the Rupix drive coupling from the gearbox to the main wheel. That was fun because those uh, things don't like coming apart and we had to hold the safety brake off and to do that we found we had to disconnect the control cable and create a condition where the brakes stayed off using the pump. It took a while to figure out how to do this. To hold the safety brake off we had to hook 24 volts onto the solenoid and just occasionally keep uh, pushing the contactor in to build the brake pressure up. That kept the brake off and we were able to use the, the rope drum roller that the uh, contractors had to pull the wire around the winding gear. Once we had the ropes disconnected from the cars and the new rope attached to the old rope, once we got the brakes released and the winding gear rolling freely, it only took 30 minutes to change the whole rope around, ready to put back on the cars.
they used a rotating swivel as a rope clamp to pull the uh, to attach the old rope to the new rope. And what that does is because the rope the way it wound, it rotates. So that was why they had a rotating swivel. But once it got to the winding gear, because the, the turns and where it had to go through the winding machinery was quite small, they just put a sock on there. It was only a short distance, and because it was wrapping over each other as part of going through the winding room, you weren't going to get the same twist. So they changed it to a single sock to get it through the winding gear, then put it back onto their swivel. Once the new wire rope was fed under the cars, we had to manually wind them around the rope drum, put all the bracketry back on, and then once the rope clamps were attached, we let all the tension off the, off the cars by releasing the brakes. You get full tension on the rope then, and then we take the cars up to the end stations, and we adjusted the rope on one of the cars to bring it in line to where it was before we started. That all that took was jacking one car up the hill, seeing how far we had to actually shorten the rope by and just pull it around the rope drum. The rope was a bit long to begin with, we took out 500mm and then we uh, started the testing where we loaded up with 7 tonne of blocks. Alright now we've got uh, 300 blocks that signify 100 full paying passages and we make sure our overload uh, is set correctly on the cars. 25 kilograms each, three, three of these represent one 75 kilogram passenger. We're ready to take a hundred of those. We're going to have to extremely on. fast, don't worry about it. <laughs> With all the uh, weight of the concrete blocks, we had to shorten the rope again. And we did that three times, one after another after each day, just to keep the cars in sync. If they get too far out of sync, if they get more than a metre out, then they just won't start. When the cable car was first commissioned, the brakes were tested with a certain amount of weight in the cars and the uh, track has always been oiled. So every time you do a test you have to em emulate the first testing as close as possible to be able to compare the results. 
and see whether adjustments need to be made or not. We're going down, down here and when we get hopefully well, in the, the end of the car, we're uh, ready to get before. It goes past the wood. I'm going to pull the gripper brake on. stretch quite a lot. It's impossible to keep it wound tight in storage so when you put it in operation it's going to stretch. The first week we took out 300 millimeters, the second week was the same and we've taken out three meters to date and that's two months after the initial rope change. Here's an overspeed box. Basically as it's going down, it gets faster and faster, these arms come out. If it gets to such a speed where it's going faster than 5 metres per second, it'll come out past that point, hit this lever, pulls on the gripper brakes. And we've got two of these on each car, and they're set at different speeds, so if one fails, the next one's ready to come on. <laughs> 